him and his wife have been building trucks for years. I co-drive. You co-drive? Oh, yeah. Co-ride, haven't heard. Okay. We cut the firewall out. Ooh, that's the um. big that's the big <laughs> jump right there, huh? <laughs> Hey guys, so we're out here at in Jubera Fab out in Hemet. Are we in Hemet? Yeah, kind, Hemet. kind of. Outskirts. <laughs> Outskirts. We're deep in the mountains, let me tell you. They had to lead me in here, but it was awesome. Super beautiful out here, scenic. This is Jubera Fab. Um, him and his wife have gone, like, have been building trucks for years. Starting with this one, right? Yeah, it was one of the first ones, yeah. Yeah, and, and they have a pretty cool story about this thing. It's been a, a learning truck. Um, and this truck has gone through a lot of phases. It has many phases. Normal long travel to leaf sprung to to wing. what this is right here <laughs> to center mounted. <laughs> Tell us about this front end. So it started as a as a normal you know bolt on lower arm. These original chassis, the frames actually the lower arm is swedged, so it cycles real weird. Okay. Um. So we we had a, a tubular upper arm with sway away shocks on it way back in the day, and then um. I wanted more out of it, so we ended up doing a J arm on it, like a small little J arm off, and then did like a, a custom spindle with a uniball on the top, and we got to like 18 inches, I think, like bumped and strapped, and that was like amazing at the time, you know? Yeah, no, that's, that is, yeah. <laughs> the one was reminding me, when we went out to Akatia when it was leaf sprung, and we just had uh, 2.5 threaded body swayways in the, in the rear, and then mm. we had a a 2.5 coil over in the front with a with a sway away bump stop off the upper arm and um we went out truck was working great and um axle wrap we snapped the drive shaft in half oh shoot okay yeah it was and, first trip out yeah it was least. like the first trip out um oh shoot and uh you know i was we, we came home and we started talking about it and we're like, well, we've never linked a truck. Let's link a truck. <laughs> that, that, that's pretty brave. You guys are awesome. So how was it to cut off the back of the truck? Was it scary? I don't think you cut the back of the truck no. then. No, not yet? It was C-notched, so we used the existing bed cage. Um, okay. It was already C-notched. So we, we bought giant welder yourself kit. We got it from Jeff at Giant. At um, Expo. We got the link the pockets. The Expo. <laughs> Yeah, shout, shout out to our buddy Jeff from Giant Man. Yeah. Jeff's an OG, crazy guy, pre-runner man who lives for it, huh? Keeping the little guys going. <laughs> hey, Jeff, what's up, buddy? So we burned it all together, and um, Link's pretty much set up the geometry. We used the stock housing, which was, I don't even know what it was, but it was the big housing that came in this truck because it was a sport model. Okay. Um, and then, you know, we just, uh, we linked it. We ran it for a long time. And uh, I don't remember why. Why did we decide to cut it up? I don't remember. You wanted to go center mount. Oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> he so. was like, "I want to try it out," and so he just went for it. And and then that was the first like center mount attempt, or is uh -huh. that what this is today? That was the so first one. that was the first. So we built a bulkhead. It was a full plate bulkhead. Um, the motor was actually in the stock position. Okay. Uh, originally and. Um, I was built all the J arms. These are these are not the original J arms. These are the second gen J arms. Okay. And um, I couldn't get the shock angle right. We had we had three O swayaways at the time, and the shock angle just wasn't right. So you know I slowly learned more. Talk about learning. Desert Rangers is where I learned a lot of stuff. Yeah, man. The the Desert Rangers guys. <laughs> not only are they super brutal. <laughs> but they're it's a very educational site you know uh the guys know what they're doing over there they you do, know they, yeah. those are the og garage fabric guys i learned a lot i i learned a lot on desert ranger just hours and hours of searching forms yeah. and um you know learning so uh, how cool is that man <laughs> you know honestly like think about it the community out of Des desert rangers has like had a lot of people from all over just build. Oh yeah. So rad. Yeah, it's crazy. I think a lot of them have grown up too, so they've gone a little soft. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're not as mean anymore. Oh, okay, that's cool, that's cool. <laughs> so we uh, decided to set the motor back to get the right shock geometry okay. and angles and motion ratio and everything. So we ended up setting the motor back almost 14 inches oh, into okay. the cab. We cut the firewall out. Ooh, that's the, um, big, ju that's the big jump right there, huh? <laughs> the truck was already caged at the time. We cut the front end off and the back end off almost at the same time right wow. when uh my son we found out we were pregnant with my son so mm -hmm. it was kind of like no turning back now <laughs> That's it. He, he cut the front end off and then 
like two days later, we found out we were pregnant. And that was oh, wow. And then how old are you? Ten. All right. So ten <laughs> years. Okay. All right. Uh, so um, we pushed the motor back. We ended up switching from uh, swayways to king shock. So we, end, we got 3.0 coilovers and then a 4.0 bypass but originally it didn't have a bypass so we added the 4.0 bypass when we started racing mm, okay. um, and we had to redo the upper shock mount the whole shock mount tie-in and everything we redid all that um, luckily we had enough room with how much how far the motor set back and the way the arm was designed okay the, the old arm not this arm right uh the old arm never actually saw dirt oh okay we we changed the whole bulkhead when we set the motor back we went to a we kept the plate lower bulkhead and we went with the whole tubing upper bulkhead because steering geometry and all that was right i couldn't get it right with the plate bulkhead and it, it was a learning process well know? yeah i mean look at look at how this truck handles <laughs> now like i said man this this thing works it's yeah. very cool so you guys must have the geometry right now for sure yeah it cycles so the front cycles about it's about 28 metal to metal wow and right now we're bumped and strapped at 26 the wow. shocks are actually the limiting factor on it 26 <laughs> holy moly so this is like this these are trophy truck numbers yeah so we we got full swing set steering on it with uh we put a ram assist on it it's got a how ram with a how pump okay um i'm a fan of swing set steering personally i don't like rack and pinion but that all comes down to preference <laughs> okay and it's tucked in pretty nice yeah it was uh it was fun building it that's for sure fitting the box in there and yeah and all that so yeah i mean and then i'm looking at these upper arms i mean these upper j arms and they just look so beefy it reminds me of kind of like uh geyser brothers yeah they're massive. a little bit you know <laughs> very cool huge lower arm you guys this thing um this video doesn't do it justice but this does look very similar to like a kind of like an old school trophy truck vibe. Yeah. You know what so, I mean? So Riviera, a lot of um, my buddy used to prep the Riviera truck back in the day. And I used to go over to their shop and look at the truck and just try to get as much, you know, knowledge as I could just off looking just at the truck. Just trying to vibe yeah. off it. Just like trying to get those Riviera <laughs> racing vibes. I mean, I spent hours looking at that truck. And then we're running a stock stock 5.4 right now okay so it's the original motor that came in the truck um but with all this travel it's like you don't really need to slow down it just eats that's <laughs> that's why this truck is fast is because it i don't have to i don't have to slow down <laughs> yeah i mean i can i can see why you know like, you're running the big old 40 <laughs> shocks you got 26 inches of travel running the 5.4 and like i said dude i've seen you out there you guys you guys go pretty quick yeah, yeah, she's fun. A, she's yeah. quick. <laughs> so do you ever race with I co drive. You co drive? Co ride, I haven't driven. Okay. Before, All right, that's cool. <laughs> How does it feel to 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 put your life in his hands? I've always trusted his driving. Yeah. So he's never once scared me. We've had a few that time we went tuning out in Barstow. Okay. You got footage of us the first time we ever shock tuned with the four O, right? With the bypass. Yeah, with Kevin with dial. Oh, that, okay. We had a O shiz moment there okay it was a little scary but i think that's about it that's yeah. awesome man that that's a good you're you're a good record right yeah that's a good so, known so far, not gonna, not where's gonna, some wood bro yeah. go find some wood um well that, that's great guys that's really cool and i mean again it's so awesome to see you guys as a family doing this i know you were sharing your son you're teaching him how to weld yeah. um and he's only 10 and you know you guys are so passionate about it uh I've been trying to meet with these guys for a long time. I think our schedules have always been crazy. Yeah, it's been a it's been a what, like a couple years. Couple now? years, least, yeah. <laughs> so and um, but it's really cool, guys. We're really happy to be out here. Uh, they they put out some really cool vehicles in their shop too. So I love how the reservoirs are tucked in over here too. That is wild. That's so cool. Yeah, there's not a lot of room, so we're actually getting ready to put a new motor in it right now. Uh oh. Um, we're putting a, a lightning motor in it. Will be it'll be a full forged lightning motor. Should be keeping it forward. Uh, yeah, keeping it <laughs> forward. I'm I'm a diehard. Keep the same motor that came in the vehicle. That's okay. just me. Okay. But well, I it's put, proven to work. <laughs> yeah. We've yeah. had a lot of people think it's an LS. LS. Yeah. I mean, with how fast you guys go, yeah. I mean, I would think so. Well, this was my first ever set of headers. They're just uh, mild still headers. Um, we're hopefully in the future we're gonna redo them out of stainless. Um, it was my first endeavor, so I didn't want to spend a ton of money on stainless. <laughs> yeah. No, I got you. We just put a Holly system on it. Holly EFI system on it. So oh, okay. That's super nice. It's a full standalone system. And um, and that works with. The 
the 5.4. I thought they only did LS stuff. No, they make one for the 5.4 and the 5.0. Nice. So I was pretty stoked because I looked for a long time and finally found one. Okay. What's the track width on this thing? Um, So with the 39s, the 39s are 13 and a half inches wide, like 93 or 94 or something like that. But right we're on. actually switching back to 40s. Oh, okay. With a 12 and a half inch wide tire. Okay. So it should put it back to around 91, hopefully. Right on. And the tire and wheel package, what do you guys um, have on here? So we're running Walker Evans bead locks. And then right now we're running the uh, BFG 39. The, K, TA? the KRs. Oh, the, oh, the KRs, yeah. Well, it's, this one's a TA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The KRTAs or whatever they call them. I think. Right on. So in the rear, we're running a 3035 bypass. We're running a 2.5 four inch stroke bump on the rear. Okay. Uh, King, of course. And then mm -hmm. we're running a Camberg four inch chromoly housing. We're running a guy, yeah. uh, Gearworks third mm -hmm. member. Uh, my buddy Kevin Lawrence put it together for us. Oh, okay. So it's got a 10 inch, 10 inch gear, ring gear, and then it's got a jumbo 36 spool in it. How's this uh, drive shaft holding up? Good. Um, we had a local guy in Elsinore do it for us. And he got the angle right and everything. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, we're running. So we actually designed our own hubs. Really? So front and rear, we're running our own hubs. The front, we're running a two five and then the rear, we're running three and a quarter. Okay. So, um, and is this the standard trophy truck? Uh, yeah, so it's trophy truck six on six and a half, dude. I, I might, do you guys have that? I might end up buying some from you guys. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, you guys machine with somebody local? Um, or? so actually, uh, Everson Performance does all our machining currently. Okay, um, we're going to be bringing it in, in house fairly soon. Excellent. If there's any way we can help you guys get the word out, you guys yeah. let us know, okay? Appreciate it. So we're running a CVR radiator. Um, oh, and you're running it back here? Yeah, right. we're running it in the rear. The main reason we put it in the rear was because we didn't have a lot of room up front with all the reservoirs and everything, and right. also for racing. That was okay. that was some of the reason. Okay. And then we got our jack handle right here with our quick disconnect mount. Nice. Um, Actually, about a year ago, we cut this back half off. Oh, from here? So right here, we cut the back off. Because oh. we started racing, we had a 25 gallon fuel cell that was right here. Yeah. So we got rid of that. We moved the batteries here. And then we um, we ended up going to a, a 70 gallon fuel safe. Oh, okay. And then Ma it makes sense. The axle. Yeah. Okay, behind the axle. Mm -hmm. so, and then, it, and then it, yeah, I mean, that absolutely makes sense, yeah. dude. Yeah. This is a. Kevin with dialed. And then Roy at ODR. Roy swears by it. <laughs> Roy's like, don't you dare, right? Yeah. I, I told Roy where my fuel cell was. He's like, you're doing it all wrong. What what kind of differences have you guys noticed with the placement back there? It's night and day difference. The front floats through the two track out in the CERN. I mean, we were, some of the deep true track in Barstow, we were only able to do like 50, maybe 60. Now we're doing almost 80, 90 through it. Oh my God. It, it, it changed the whole dynamic of That's... the truck. Like you used to pucker for certain things. Yeah, yeah I can imagine. And now it just pops and floats. And you know, Kevin with dial got the thing tuned so good. It just... It just floats now. Dude, that is, that that's a really big speed. And then you're running your two spares back here. Man, you guys are doing it right. No wonder you guys are floating over everything we yeah, see just, you guys. it took a long time. So, yeah. Yeah, so we set the rear, when we redid the back half, we knew we were, go, we were gonna go to 40s. Okay. So we set it up for dual. I've always been a fan of the dual spare side by side. I just love the look. Yeah. That's then, cool. I like I like that look too. My buddy uh, Pre Ryan Dan has it like that. Yeah, he does. Yeah. yeah. Right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a storage box, an aluminum storage box to hold like all the fluids, the okay. jack. This is just temporary, so we can actually have a jack. Of course, <laughs> yeah. No man, do what you gotta do. And then we did a we did a quick fill right here in the back for cool. when we race and stuff. Right on. I see the uh, because you have the five four motor in it. It's still street legal. Yeah, it's street legal. <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, anything else you want to cover back here? Um, so we're just running, um, we're running um, the fuel filters. Yeah, what's the name? Air motor? Uh, area motive fuel filters on it, area motive fuel regulator, and then we're running a Bosch 044 fuel pump. Okay. We had a diff, so we had a, a Walbrol 250 fuel pump, and 
it just it let out on us on the first second trip mm. so we ended up going to a uh, bosch 044 and we haven't had any issues with it since hopefully it's set up to run another one and hopefully we'll get another one on in the future the just in case <laughs> yeah the just in case right on right on so we don't have a sway bar on this thing yet. yeah there's oh, no there's okay. no sway bar on this truck this truck's always set really good um whether it be tuning or the geometry, it's just always set really good, and I've gotten used to the way it sets and driving it. So you feel pretty good about no no, no sway bar, huh? Where we want to add one in okay. the future, and but with how it is, you feel comfortable. As how it is, I feel really comfortable setting it into corners, and um, it's always just been real predictable. And then these are these are wild uh, links. These are crazy. These are cool. So tell me about these guys. So these are our newest gen link. As you could tell, the other side still our second gen link. Okay. These are our new canoe links that we designed recently. We designed these for racing. This is full chromoly. It's got two internal ribs that run the span of half the arm and then it's got a center rib that runs all the way from the uniball to okay. the back heim. Okay, so these are beefy. Yeah, they're these beefy. We snapped one at Rage. It was our first gen link that didn't have a lot of internal bracing. Okay. Um, It was made out of mild steel as well. So we oh, decided, wow, okay. We decided since we started racing and the truck's getting faster, let's build something that's gonna be bulletproof. And this is, this is a Jubera Fab yeah Peace. we designed it so i design on solidworks too nice so we designed all that we're running a 4l80 trans in it okay it's a full manual valve body um built by my buddy at rde my buddy kyler trans doesn't even get over 100 degrees when we're running it racing <laughs> dang that's it, awesome it's amazing like, oh, it blows us away. i might need to go there because yeah. i need my trans built next so <laughs> what's up buddy and then what what glass is on this thing um so we have Fiberworks bedsides, and then we have Trailer Products front clip. Okay. Funny fact about that: the Riviera clips actually a Tundra front end. What? Yeah. <laughs> Why did you do this to me? <laughs> Jeez, this guy ruined my childhood. <laughs> just kidding. I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. I'm, I'm, and they just changed the lights? Supposedly they changed and reworked it somehow. I don't remember. That's what I was. I thought, I thought, I thought they stretched. It. They stretched it. And okay. Whitened it and, stuff. and then just put yeah. the Ford grill and lights. That's what I was told. I mean, someone correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But that's what I thought I was told. Trailer products. We know you probably don't watch our videos because we're lame. <laughs> but you guys are cool. And we got to work with this guy. So let's make it happen. Let's get him some trailer products glass. Let's get him dialed in with that classic, uh, you know, Riviera trophy truck look. I mean, he has the front end right here, and he goes here. fast. Here's the OG sticker. <laughs> There's the sticker right there. So, all right, we'll, we'll work on that guys. We will. So I guess take us through the inside really quick. Oh, oh and then what were your travel numbers in the rear? Uh, so rear is strapped at, um, I think we strapped it at like 29 right now. Metal, so it's fairly balanced, huh? Yeah, it's fairly balanced. I didn't want to go, it'll pull like 34 in the rear, mm. but I wanted to try to keep it more balanced and okay. not, not too over the top. We might loosen it up a little bit once we get some more motor. Okay, right on. Cool. And then you're running the Baja Designs. I didn't even think I touched on that. Yeah, What's up, Brennan? Brennan got us hooked up with those. Dude, Brennan is the homie. Shout out to Brennan. Shout out to Baja Designs for always making such badass lights. Um, dare I say they're my favorite. <laughs> I'm going to get an angry email from somebody again. What? From Casey. From Casey or somebody else. But I love Baja Designs, man. I'm I'm biased to it, you know? Yeah, we so, are so, so we're running Switch Pros. Um, You just can't beat them for the price and... That's what I've heard. How good they work, you just can't beat it. Very cool. Awesome. So we don't have the dash in it right now. When we switched over to the Holly system, um, I haven't had time to rework the dash because originally it had the stock cluster in it mm -hmm. and it was formed to the stock cluster. So I want to, we're probably going to build a new dash that's more low profile for racing and stuff. Okay. And, um, Still run the stock column. <laughs> nice, dude. Dude, that, I mean, I think, I don't know if people know out there, but I love the stock dashes in trucks. I just think it gives it like such a cool, clean pre-runner vibe. So I think we got to tell Ryan to, uh, to to put the stock, somehow get the stock dash back in here. Right. Uh, cool, man. Well, very good. So so you got that all dialed in right there. You got your little, uh, your charging station. Yeah, radio. you got to have, have the charger for the wife's phone. Absolutely. <laughs> We got the PCI radios, the four com, because we put we run the we run with our kids in here as well when oh, we're, okay. we're going out in the desert. Nice. So and then we have the Kenwood race radio. Um, 
I wired the truck from scratch when we put the Holly system on. I redid everything on it. How was that? Um, it wasn't bad. Um, I heard the Holly systems really make a good difference. So the Holly systems, the standalone, that was fairly easy running everything and mounting the computer and everything. Um, and then the Switch Pros made it really easy to wire. Nice. Um, we're we're using all Deutsch connectors with uh, Pro Wire USA uh, mil spec wiring and everything on it. Nice. And then uh, in the Excellent. rear. <laughs> and then so you have back here. Oh, you got your Parker pumper stuff right there. Yeah, we got a. We have? a rugged Parker, oh, rugged. rugged Parker pumper. Um, What's up, rugged? <laughs> What's up, guys? Dude, that's cool. And Very then cool. we have uh, switch pros in the back. So the way I wired it was there's a switch pros in the back of the truck that runs the rear of the truck. The okay. front runs the the front switch pro runs the front of the truck. Mm, okay. Um, well, that, that's probably a, a an easy problem solution right it, there. It right? was, and every problem solving. Every wire um, to every component is a different color, different strand, everything. Perfect. So we have a full wiring diagram. If we ever got to troubleshoot it, it makes it really easy. Excellent, man. And then you got the kid seats back here. So we that's a mount for a, for a kid's, for our daughter's car seat. Okay. Um, and then it uses the factory latches to latch it in and everything. Nice. And then we also um, put more straps on it, of course, to hold it down better. And then we just put this 1G in for my son now that he's old enough to uh, yeah right in a how do the kid how do the kids like these things they love it he yeah. they love it um at first when we first started because the the wife her her um the gmc, the GMC was full sealed cab mm. ac heat yeah the kids when we went to this truck the kids um it was did, different it's like being outside exactly. you could hear everything yeah, yeah. There's no windshield yeah cold. yeah i mean i get i get scared <laughs> i'm gonna complain i'm gonna be like where's my cheez it's and fruit snacks mom like what the heck you know yeah and they didn't like how loud it was either because you yeah. can hear everything you can hear hear yeah. the bypasses clicking mm -hmm. and at, at that point my truck only had the rear bypasses so it was a lot quieter yeah full yeah. interior yeah Right on. So um, no, I get it, and it takes some adjustment. You know, I, I'm sure the headsets and all that stuff would definitely work with that. And then you got the PRP seats, seat belts, and then uh, Mastercraft seats. Yeah, we got the 3G Mastercraft seats with the. I really like PRP belts. They're really easy to adjust. I like how they have the sternum strap as and, well. And so dang comfortable. Yeah, they're super comfy. Those are our boys out there. Running uh, Black Widow exhaust on it. Black Widow exhaust. Yeah. Shout Heck out yeah. to Brian. <laughs> all right, man. So I think other than the motor, we're just going to kind of clean it up. We're going to, when we put the new motor in, we're going to sandblast the whole front end and okay. we're going to paint it. And then we're going to do full door panels, um, finish the dash like we talked about. Just kind of finish it off. Mm -hmm. This truck's okay. always been, let's try to keep it out in the desert as like, much as we can. Like, let's just keep driving. Yeah, I just, feel you, dude. just keep it driving. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. right now it needs a full teardown and a full prep. Like, we've gotcha. just been taking it out nonstop, just trying to put miles on it. You yeah. Know? Well, guys, there you have it. Jubera Fab. I'm hoping one day we could talk about Trent's uh, Explorer. Yeah. You guys built that, right? We built From Trent's the Explorer, and then uh, we built the Tundra, too. So they have some cool stuff, guys. Hopefully, <laughs> someday we can come out and uh, maybe meet up with them and have 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 them come out and explain um, the build process on those things. Uh, but thank you guys so much for checking out this episode. If you guys have any questions for Jubera Fab, you guys can hit them up on Instagram. We'll have their tags and everything in the description. If you guys are interested in purchasing any of the products they might offer, you guys can hit them up there too. Very cool what they have going on here. Super cool family program. And uh, we're super happy to have them featured here. So thanks guys. If you guys like what you see, like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Share this. If you guys know somebody that's building an F-150 like this and would like it to look like this someday, share that, share this video with them. Have a good one. Bye.